about you. Yes. I'm really in love with Jesus, and we have to fall in love with God. Amen? Amen? I will share this with you. You want to know this, beloved. Don't forget this. It's something I, I kind of learned in the last few years as a priest, especially from St. John Hughes, but several other saints as well. We want to trade our faith with Mary's faith. We want to trade our hope, our confidence with Mary, and our love with Mary's love. Now let's get rid of our own faith, our own hope, and our own love tonight, and begin loving God with Mary's faith, Mary's hope, and Mary's love. That will elevate you and I to a higher level, really to a saintly level. Amen? Amen. So beginning tonight, let's do that. And here's a consecration that John Paul recommended. It's just three lines. Would you say this after me? It was written by St. Louis de Montfort, but recommended by St. John Paul. If you could say this, I am all thine, Lord Jesus. And all that I have is thine. Through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's it. Isn't that easy? St. Louis wrote it, John Paul recommended it, and you and I are going to do it. Amen? Amen. Now we'll say it a second time, but in the plural. In the plural. Would you say this? We are all thine, Lord Jesus. We are all thine, Lord Jesus. And all that we have is thine. And all that we have is thine. Through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Heart of Mary. Amen. Amen. Now, beloved, I want to, first of all, bless some medals for you, the St. Benedict Medal, because it is the official exorcism medal of the Roman Catholic Church. And really, um, every Christian should wear one today, including Baptists and Methodists. Every Christian should wear this medal. If you already have one, consider placing this one we're going to give you tonight. Consider placing this one in your vehicle to protect your car from terrible accidents as well, okay? So I'm going to bless these, and I waited for your presence to give them the official blessing. Because the church recommends that we do these blessings in the presence of the faithful. But there's another reason why I wanted to do it with you. This is my own experience. I've worked with exorcists around the world. And we have noticed the same thing. That when we do this blessing in the presence of the church, and you participate with us, the blessing comes over you at the same time. We have seen people released from devils, but also healed of physical infirmities simply by this blessing. I believe you will experience something right now. I'm going to use the older blessing. It's an exorcism blessing of the medal. And what Holy Mother Church recommends is when you see me bless the medals with a sign of the cross, the church recommends that you take your right hand and you bless your body at the same time. So when you see me blessing the medals, I'll do that several times, four times. When you see me do that, you would bless your body simultaneously. And the same exorcism blessing will come over you simultaneously. So you should leave here lighter than when you came in. Are you ready? St. Alphonsus recommended this. He says, begin and end everything with a Hail Mary, St. Alphonsus the Glory. So let's begin with the mother of exorcists, the Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our help is in the name of the Lord. So whenever you hear the priest or the bishop say that, the answer is, who made heaven and earth? That's the standard Catholic formula. So let's do that one more time. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth? I can feel my hand getting hot. That always happens. It's the Holy Spirit. In the name of God, the Father Almighty, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, I exorcise these metals against the power and attacks of the evil one. May all who use these metals devoutly be blessed with health of soul and body in the name of the Father Almighty, of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and of the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, and in the love of the same Lord Jesus Christ, who will come on the last day to judge the living and the dead and the world by fire. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the boundless source of all good things, we humbly ask that, through the intercession of St. Benedict, you pour out your blessings upon these metals. May those who use them devoutly and earnestly strive to perform good works, be blessed by you with health of soul and body, the grace of a holy life, and remission of the temporal punishment due to sin. May they also, with the help of your merciful love, Resist the temptations of the evil one and strive to exercise true charity and justice towards all so that one day they may appear sinless and holy in your sight 
This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Then the church asks us to bless the medals with holy water. And then St. Alphonsus asks us to pray to the Virgin a second time. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Now, beloved, the medals are blessed and exercised, and they're ready. And if I could get a couple helpers, let's give one to each one in the church right now. I wonder, John Paul, could you help me with these? We have a handout that was made to explain. We have a special explanation of the medal to give to you tonight. Just a lucky strike extra. So you're receiving a little explanation sheet. If, I hope there's enough. I don't know. If there's not, maybe share them as a family. And I'll share with you what's printed on your medal, among other prayers. It's in Latin, of course. It's the first letter of each of the words. But one of the prayers on your medal actually says this in modern-day teenage English. It says this on your medal. Satan... Take your poison and eat it yourself. <laughs> That's actually what it says in Latin. But I prefer modern teenage English. Satan, take your poison and eat it yourself. I have found this in my own experience to be the most powerful medal in the Catholic Church. It banishes the evil spirit. If you're not wearing one, you should consider putting one on today or when you get home. If you have one already, put this one in your vehicle. And of course, if you have one there, then give this to somebody in your family, the one you're receiving tonight. Now, I want to share with you a story about this medal to give you some idea of its efficacy, what you just received in your hand. It's very powerful. Your hand is now radioactive <laughs> with the power of the Holy Spirit. So here's one of many stories. I've seen so many miracles with this medal, I could actually write a book about this medal. For instance, I've seen pornography shops close down. We paint these around pornography shops. I saw a gentleman's club, but I don't know any gentleman who actually go there. It's called a gentleman's club in Texas. And we planted these medals late at night around the gentleman's club because it was ruining marriages. So I went out there with a team of about 10 men. We had all of their wives come before the Blessed Sacrament and pray the rosary before the Blessed Sacrament after midnight as we went out there to plant the medal. We were tying very carefully. We had two different cars. And as soon as they closed down and the parking lot emptied, I said, no. <laughs> and you should have seen my men. We all dressed in black. We were the real men in black. <laughs> we jumped out of the car, went to every corner of the building and the property and planted the medals. We, we had trained in advance and we had a map and everything. Planted the medals and left in three minutes. Then I had to go to the airport the next day. When I came back from another trip, we drove down the highway, going near Corpus Christi, Texas. And I was really puzzled, and I, I asked my team, I said, where is that building? What building, Father? The, the, the gentleman's club. I don't see it. it. I thought it was on this highway. They said, Father, didn't you hear? No, it burned to the ground. <laughs> don't tell them that I did it. Don't tell them. That's a true story. We've had so many wondrous things happen, but I want to tell you one that's very heartwarming before I give you the next gift. So this is a very heartwarming story about the medal you have in your hand. I was also in Texas because that's where the headquarters of our community are located. I belong to the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. So while I was in Texas there, I received a call and I was asked by a wonderful parishioner who was very, very concerned if I could go and do an exorcism of a public junior high school. And she explained to me the situation, and it was very, very, very bad. It was a junior high school in Texas. I can't tell you, like, what city or what district, because I think I may have broken the law. And that is because I went and I combined church and state that night. <laughs> and I went there with my team to do an exorcism of a junior high school. They asked me, please, Father, they had so many problems. It was drug abuse. It was violence. Um, it was poverty. And it all came to a head the week before. 
when one of the students at that junior high school, I think he was 14, he committed suicide by hanging himself by the neck outside the front entrance to the school. And you talk about a horror and a tragedy. And you know how the government is. They tried to fix the problems before, but here is what our government thinks. They throw money right at problems. They throw more money, more money, and more money, but that doesn't cut it. We actually, if truth be told, we need God in the schools. And by the way, not every government is like our government. I work all over the world. I've been in other countries where they, they asked me, the government asked me to go to the schools. The separation of church and state is a fraud. It's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Declaration. I know because my dad was a lawyer and a judge. It's not in either one. It's not part of the law. It's a fraud. It was written in a private letter. You knew that, right? I think it was Thomas Jefferson who wrote a private letter. Many countries around the world, many countries, asked the priest to go, even to bless the government buildings. I blessed the government offices of the Prime Minister of Belize late one night. And guess what? The scent of roses came into the whole government office building for the next eight hours. The scent of roses. Amen. Amen. So our country needs to be redone and reborn. Amen. Amen. We need to become a Catholic nation. Amen. Let's say one Hail Mary right now that we become a truly Catholic nation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Well, beloved, I asked my team, the particular lady who asked me, could I go and do an exorcism of this junior high school? I said, well, we need to ask the principal for his permission. So I asked my team, what is his name? And they told me, I'll just make up a name. They said, well, his name is Mr. Gonzalez. I said, oh, good, he's probably Catholic, go ask him. Because almost all the Hispanics are Catholic. So they said, Gonzalez. I said, oh, yes, ask him today. He sent me back a message, Father, I would be honored and I beg you to come. I sent him back a message, we will come tomorrow night. Don't tell anyone, I told him. We will come at night when the sun sets, when everybody is gone. We're going to do an exorcism of your school. And we're going to plant the St. Benedict medal around your school. He was so grateful. And we met him the next evening. It was about six or seven in the evening. Everybody was gone, just the principal and my team. So I started the prayer in his office and did an exorcism in the office, one written by Pope Leo XIII. We did an exorcism there, and this always happens when we do an exorcism of a building. Something falls from the wall down to the ground every single time, like one of those stations of the cross with a purple rope around it, boom, hits the ground. It's almost like the devil, like an angry adolescent, slams something as he leaves out the door, you see? But he has to go anyway, you see? He's like pouting, you might say. It happens every time. It happened there. So well, don't be afraid. Don't be, I need to go on his way out. You know what that means? Don't be afraid. So we finished the exorcism of the office. It took about 30 minutes. So now, Mr. Principal, we're going to plant the medal around your school. It's a giant school, 2,000 students. Giant. So we proceeded for the next two and a half hours at night. About every 20 yards, we stopped. We made a hole in the ground. We put a St. Benedict medal in the hole. We covered it up and said a Hail Mary all the way around the entire school. By then, it was about 10, 10.30 at night. We finally got done with everything. I said, Mr. Principal, we're just getting started. We'll be back tomorrow night. So we met him the second night. Again, when everybody was gone, the sun was going down, and we planted the medals now on the inside of the school around each building itself, every single building in this huge school. When we got done with that. I said, Mr. Principal, we'll be back tomorrow night. We came back a third night. We, we prayed in every classroom in the school. There were a lot of them. We said one decade of the rosary in every classroom, and we hid the St. Benedict medal in every classroom. Then we finally were done, and we said goodbye. That school, beloved, was known as the worst, the most dangerous, and the most violent school in the school district. For 50 years, they had ranked number 60 out of 60 schools. And there in Texas at that time, they had two ratings, two markings for every school. One was academic, the other was called it social. So they measured every junior high school by academic progress and by social skills. Do they get along, you see? Are they polite? That school had been the last, number 60, for 50 years in a row. We did that blessing around September of the school year. Let me ask you to take a guess where that school was rated at the end of that school year. It was number one! 
in academics and in social skills, number one in the whole district. And nobody knows how it happened. <laughs> Except the principal, me and my team. Amen? Amen. Is that awesome? Yes. That is awesome. Amen. That's what you have in your hand. Is that metal? It is a nuclear reactor, that metal. So wear it, put it in your car, give it to a loved one. And remember the old Catholic tradition, the old tradition, to plant them around your houses. It's the old Catholic tradition. You should do this, beloved. They're not very expensive, especially if you buy them by the bag. Have Father bless them for you with a special blessing. I'll leave him a copy of it. Have Father bless it for you. And plant at least four around the four corners of your property. You will see. So I tell you one more miracle story before I go on? This is actually true. I can't tell you this city because I didn't break any laws this time. I was in Robstown, Texas, another um, subdivision, you might say, or suburb of Corpus Christi. A little tiny, poor city. And I went to bless a family home. Because they had a tragedy in this family. The father had died in a car crash and left behind a wife and six children. It was really heartbreaking. So I went to say mass in the house to lift up the family and the soul of the father. Bless the family. God was with us and the Holy Spirit was moving and they were being healed. And at the end, I said, Mama, now I want to plant the St. Benedict medal around your house for your protection. So St. Benedict be like a father to your family right now, you see. She says, yes, Padre. So I planted not four, I planted 50 medals around the house. About 20 around the concrete itself, around the structure itself, in the ground, and the other 30 on the edge of the property line, on the edge. It took about an hour. I had a lot of helpers there. It didn't take that long. We got done. And again, I had to leave to travel. Something happened there just a few weeks after we did that. It was actually in the national news. A wildfire hit Robstown. In this poor area, they're all wooden houses, and with the very poor families, all wooden houses. It burned the houses to the ground. It was dangerous and bad. It went right down the neighborhoods. But when it got to the house that we blessed, with 50 St. Benedict medals, about 10, like, like on this side here, 10 in a row, when the fire came not to the house, to the property line, the fire stopped and died. The only house still standing unharmed was that house. Not touched at all. <laughs>